Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today in this video, we are going to learn about life cycle block and terraform. We'll understand what is life cycle block, how do we use that, in which scenario we should be using this kind of a configuration in your terraform code. Hi, my name is Rakesh Suryavanji and you're watching Be Your Learner. Life Let's say I have this code to create the storage account and I'm defining some of the attributes properties of my resource of which is of type storage account. As I mentioned, you can define the resource block in the, uh, as I mentioned, you can define the lifecycle block on the resource type as well as in the data source type. To define that, you can use the lifecycle, which is like this and then you can define the attributes of that life cycle so there are multiple types of attributes we have first one is create before destroy which is this one this proves that terraform when the terraform executes we would like to tell the terraform execution that we should always create a resource before it is going to destroy so let's say you have this storage account created as an LRS and now you would like to change it to GRS. Now, if you do so, changing the account, next property we have here in the lifecycle block is the prevent destroy. So there are some scenarios wherein we would like to prevent destroying our infrastructure resources, even though somebody is running Terraform destroy command or somebody is making some changes to a parameter which will impact the resource type it means it will try to destroy the resource and if you don't want to destroy that particular resource type then you can specify the prevent destroy property as in true so in that case when the terraform destroy command or the terraform tries to destroy the resource type it will throw an error that this particular resource type is marked as in prevent destroy hence it cannot be deleted third and last option within the life cycle block which is one of the most important block or which is the type of property which i have widely used in my infrastructure as code scenarios in various projects the property is ignore changes so ignore changes block is the collection of attributes in which you can specify what are the different attribute which terraform should ignore comparing to the target infrastructure so for example let's say if you have this story account resource created in azure and now somebody has done some manual changes to story account configuration and you would like to ignore those manual configuration so that it doesn't affect uh, when you run the terraform code if that's the case then you can specify those kind of attributes here in your Terraform resource block. I can give you an example of resource tags. For example, you have created the storage account and in the Azure, you, there is a resource level policy created by your admin group, which will apply the tags to the various resources. For example, in the storage account, they would the policy will apply a certain number of tags. And now if you run the Terraform plan command again or apply command again, your Terraform changes will show that these tags are not managed by the Terraform infrastructure as code. So it will try to destroy those changes and it will also, it will always show the changes like this, which you would like to ignore it because you know that the Terraform code is not responsible to manage those attributes such as the tags. In that case, those kind of attributes you can specify in the ignore changes block so that when you run the terraform code it will ignore those attributes and your terraform code will not show any changes let me show you an example so here i'm marking tags as in ignore changes modify the tags to one of the story account let's say if i do not use this ignore life cycle block then my Terraform code will show the changes that it will try to 
destroy the tags which I have added to the storage account. As you can see that it is basically trying to remove the tag. Whereas if I use the lifecycle block, because as I said, tags are going to manage by Azure policies or someone by manually, not from Terraform code basically. I would like to ignore the changes of the tag. That's why we are using the lifecycle block. So let's run the plan now. And you can see that this time it's not showing the changes that someone has modified the tag because tag attribute is being ignored by our Terraform configuration using the lifecycle block. Thanks for watching it. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video. Thanks again.